Okay, good evening, everyone. So we cordially invite you to the second session of Hands of Python by GDSC Jigari. So yeah, how are you all? Okay. Uh, so today we uh, resuming where we left off on the previous class. We started off on Saturday. Also, let us wait for two more minutes. Okay, we have a question in the chat box, ma'am. I had a look. Please don't call me, ma'am. Yes, we can ask you what you doubt this. Okay, you can ask what your question is. Okay, so let us quickly recap. I mean, we uh, let's quickly recap what we uh, saw in the previous class. So in the previous class, we started the hands-on Python. We discussed about the mathematical op uh, operators in Python, uh, which are plus, minus, multiplication, division, exponentiation, integer division, and modulo division. We saw in detail what are uh, what all those functions are, uh, and then we saw the operator precedence. Uh, we understood what it is. Uh, okay, so yeah, uh, okay, Shruti, I'll get back to you. Meanwhile, let us just quickly have somebody and I'll get back to you, okay? So, yes, uh, we saw the operator precedence, uh, how uh, the priority basically precedence is nothing but priority, so we saw that, and then we saw what dynamic typing is, and Python is, done, uh, is called a, a dynamic type language because uh, the type of the data is not uh, declared during the compile time. It's actually it's not compiled uh, while it is being interpreted while it is being executed during the runtime. Uh, the data type of the variable is, uh, you know, determined. So yeah. Uh, and next we saw the control statement if elif and else and how they are similar to C. It's very uh, basic thing. Uh, it's very similar to C language, but instead of else, we use the word elif. That is the keyword here. And just moving on, we uh, saw the loops. There are two types of loops. There are both. Uh, they are while and for. And we will see in detail about how for loop is used uh, in string, uh, strings and tuples. Uh, I'm sorry, in strings and lists. We will see that in today's class. And we saw the string handling. Uh, how the strings are handled in Python. So yeah, this uh, is something very basic. And also we also saw why we, uh, both single quote and double quotations are allowed in Python. What difference uh, that makes in Python? We also saw that, and we uh, uh, discussed the concept of immutability. What immutable actually means? So, uh, in simple, immutable is just nothing but uh, you know, once created, you cannot change it. If you want to change it, it will point to some other location. How that is done, we will see. But for now, just keep in mind that immutability means if you uh, have declared something. Something that is immutable, you cannot change. And some built-in data types with immutable are int, float, boolean, and unicode tuples. Okay. The things which are mutable in Python are lists. Okay. Keep that in mind for now. I'm sorry about the spelling mistake. Anyway. So yeah, uh, there are different string methods. Uh, methods which are performed on string objects. So some of them are these, and we also saw how uh, you know. We also tried and executed some of them, and I also 
give a kind of an assignment uh, you know to try out all those methods i don't know how many of you did that so just give a yes or no whether you tried all the methods if not all at least important ones that we discuss in the class so yes or no in the comment section please yeah these are some of the methods that we discussed if it is a decimal digit identifier lower unique there are many more to go you know there is a video of python you have many built in methods so you do not have to constantly declare new functions and new methods and you know execute them it is not required you see that is a video of python so that is uh, the reason why python is used widely across the world and yeah the strategy so the previous class so this was a quick recap of uh, what we discussed in our previous class i hope you all uh, remember it most of most of you i hope you do well uh, getting back to you mr rudhi uh, you see uh, which year are you from by the way may i ask Okay, for everybody, those who do not know, uh, those who are new here, well, uh, GDSC is a student uh, club, uh, GPRIC. Uh, it comes under the direct control of Google itself. So it's not that there is a minty. Uh, we have a uh, you know club lead uh, who is Sai Sudhakar from third CAE. So yeah, we all are the uh, you know people who are members of the student club, GDSC club. Okay. and we all have uh, i happen to be the volunteer from the machine learning team and yeah we have uh, parnana in our meet today he is the machine learning lead uh, machine learning team lead and we also have uh, varshnia ka who couldn't join us today but yeah so this is the machine learning team we have uh, there is no such thing as mentee uh, uh, mentors in gdc there is nothing like that i think there is a misconception okay uh if anybody has any more questions uh, let us uh this is until 6:40 and we'll get into uh, the today's session by 6:40 anybody has any more questions if you have any more questions we can discuss them till 6:40 and we will move on with our session without any further ado okay Is your question answered, Ms. Shruti? If it is answered, if, if you are not clear about it, or if you have any uh, questions regarding previous sessions, anything else, we can discuss it and we can move on. Okay, so that is it. Then we can move on. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for the response. Okay, let's without any. Okay, we still have some few seconds left, but still, I'm just getting into it. Okay, so today in today's session, first of all, I welcome once again. I welcome you all to uh, today's session. Once again, I request any one of you, please open your Jupyter notebooks and be join on your laptops. It will be way too convenient. You cannot do Python on, you know, uh, your mobile phones. You cannot do coding on your mobile phones. So you can. It is not very convenient. So kindly switch to your laptops. And if you do not, by the way, I actually wanted to point this out. Uh, if you do not have, uh, you know, Python uh, Jupyter notebook installed on your laptops. Then you can go uh, on an uh, interpreter called as Google Colab. Okay, it's it's not something that I usually desk, uh, but for the projects I usually go with uh, Jupyter Notebook. Uh, but if you do not have Jupyter Notebook installed due to any some you know, uh, internet issues or anything, you can go with the Google Colab. All that you need, you need for this is your simple simply your mail ID. Okay. You just have to uh, use your mail ID and just log in with that, and go good to go. I'm sorry about it. My internet is slow, I guess. You simply can go to Google Colab, and you can, you know, execute your code. There. So let me just uh, create a new notebook here. 
actually though it is very convenient than google uh, you know jupiter notebook google cloud is very convenient actually when you are doing projects you know you usually have to install many 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 libraries you have to set up environments and do many other uh, stuff like that but uh, you know in google cloud you do not have to install the uh, libraries etc but the thing with google cloud is that you definitely need an internet connection when you want to op- it with it you know you cannot do it without an internet connection but with jupyter notebook you can just simply install it and you can use it you know without any internet connection you do not have to worry about the uh, connection problems network problems it's much common convenient in jupyter everything has its own set of advantages and disadvantages so yeah uh, if you do not have a uh, jupyter notebook installed on your laptops right now you can go with google collab and do uh, along with me simultaneously but uh, make sure you are practicing regularly only then you will be able to keep up with the subject okay you can do something like that and you get the output but my internet is very slow that's the reason it's slowly very slow sorry about that am i all clearly like the issue with my voice or something is everything going right smoothly just give me a yes or no please Because if there are any issues, we will try to fix them. Okay. That's the reason I you know, keep requesting all of you to just you know keep responding. Yes. So yeah, it works very similar to you know uh, Jupyter Notebook, but there are like few ch- uh, differences. This is no big deal. So yeah, those who do not have Jupyter Notebook, kindly switch to Google Colab for now. But I totally suggest and recommend you to uh, Jupyter Notebook itself. Okay. So yeah, let's get started. Not bad anymore. Okay, so let us see what today's agenda is. So yeah, in this class we will be uh, discussing about the string operations, string processing, and the other data structures such as uh, lists, tuples, and dictionaries. Okay, and also sets. I did not mention it here, but we will also be learning slightly about them. Okay, we will go on. But though we discuss string operation, we discussed about string methods in the previous class. But in today's session, we will be discussing about the string operations. So just basic, uh, nothing very serious or uh, nothing very uh, you know complicated. It's very simple thing, you know, simple things that you need to know about Python basically. Okay, so the string concatenation can be done with uh, you know plus operator. You can ask me like uh, I told in the previous session that when you are trying to uh, use arithmetic operators as plus on you know. Strings along with an integer, it will throw an error. Yes, I still stick with that. If you try to uh, perform arithmetic operations with, uh, you know, strings and integer, it will throw an error. But if you try to do the same thing with an, uh, you know, another string, it will work fine. Let me show you how. Okay, I'll come back to that. Don't uh, get tense looking at this cell. We will, we will get back. To this, okay. So let me say, uh, what shall we do this time? Let's take we, okay? We is equal to GDSC plus GPRC, okay? Now let me print. You see? Now you may ask me a question: Why wouldn't it throw a syntax error when we did this? Like you know, a space inside, uh, you know, double quotation. It will not throw an error because space is also a character. Okay, kindly keep that in mind. Space is also a character. It is written as a character, so uh, it will also be considered. And this whole thing is concatenated into one single string, and that string stored in the location B. Technically, it's not the same, you know. Uh, actually, this entire string is stored in a location, and the variable v will be pointing to that. We'll get to it, like why it is pointing, etc., etc. We'll get into the details when we discuss the object-oriented uh, classes. Okay. When we discuss the object uh, concepts, we will get back to it. Excuse us a minute.
Okay, sorry about that. Okay. You know, we can do something like this, okay? You know, it's getting uh, quite disturbing, so I'll just <laughs> go with this. Is it okay if I do something like this? Or do you want a full screen of, uh, you know, this entire slide? Do you want it in a full screen or shall we just proceed like this? It's getting quite, you know, messy when I do this, you know, changing from one window to another. So is that okay? Shall I just continue like this? Okay, fine. Let's just go full screen only because you people did not respond. Anyway, so yeah. A string concatenation can be the plus operator also as we saw here. And yeah, something like this, you know. And an input can be taken during runtime or uh, taken during the runtime is string by default. Okay, let us see what I mean by that. Now let me write something like this, okay? Uh, let us write uh, A is equal to Okay, don't uh, get freaked out looking at the word like input and writing all that stuff. Don't get freaked out. I'm sorry. Okay. So yeah, if I write something like this, input. Uh, let us see. Enter a value. Something like this. Okay. Okay. So now this statement, okay, what it means if you want to write the same thing in C. This is how this is something that you would write. Enter a value. And then you'd be writing scan if. If it is of string type that you're taking, then you take percentage yes. If you're taking an integer, you take percentage d. If you're taking a floating value, you take percentage up. If you're taking a character, you take percentage c, something like this. Okay. And then you would give it to an address, you write it with an ampersand, and you then you write the value a. This is the syntax that we follow in C. But here, what we do is we just simply take okay, this this line is equivalent to these two lines in C, okay. I'm just comparing it with C, with C because most of us came from the background, you know, uh, we had a C, C language as a first programming language, most of us. So that's the reason I'm comparing it with C. So there are many differences, just try to relate and understand, okay? So yeah, but here the only difference is that, you see, then you uh, take something from the user with using this in, uh, input function. No? What happens is it is string by default, okay? No matter what kind of value you give, Okay, let me just print the value A here. For those who are coming to the session for the first time and getting confused why we are not writing a print statement, it is allowed in Jupyter Notebook. That's the reason I'm writing like this. If you're still confused, kindly go and refer to the previous videos. You will get a clear uh, picture, okay? And uh, now what shall we make? Let's write something like 45, okay? If you this, it is inside of you know, string collation, which, uh, you know, signified it is a string or a, a character. You can call it anything since it is a single thing. Anyway, we'll call it a string, okay? It is a string. It That is what denotes, okay? Now, if you write something like this, type of a string. Well, this function type, see, that is the reason I asked you to just, you know, uh, come back to the session videos. Just come on live with us. So that it will be easier for you to even understand what I'm trying to say here. Because most of the things might not be there in the PPT that we are going to provide you. Okay. We may just learn a bit some new things here if you come to the session. So I get in the session. Anyway, if we write the word type, the type keyword, it specifies what kind of a data type uh, data type that object belongs to. Okay, that variable, what kind of a uh, you know uh, data type that variable holds. Okay. So if you take it. A is string by default. Why? Because we have taken input A from the user. And the input is, uh, what do you say? Uh, string by default. But if you want to typecast it, then you have to do it explicitly. You have to give the code and do it. Okay? Now, if I write 56, see, this is not in uh, single quotes anymore. Why is it so? 
because it is not a string anymore. Why? We have changed it to teaser. We have typecasted it. Okay. Explicitly we have converted, which means we are saying to the compiler that don't take it as a string. You take it as a string, but convert it into teaser. Now, if you run the type C, it will show me. Okay. So I hope that was clear. This is how we take an input in Python from the user. Okay. Yeah, this is allowed inside the, uh, what do you say, inside the parameters, if you write something in the double quotes, that means uh, that is what, you, like, if you talk, this, if I write, let's see what happens, okay? It'll just simply show you something like this. We wouldn't understand, right? What, is, what does it want? We do not understand. So if we spe uh, specify something like that, of course, in C also, while we are writing something, we usually write a statement. So that the user who is running the code and who is, uh, you know, giving the input, put in the runtime would understand what we are trying to convey. So that is the reason, right? Here also we can do the same thing, like something like 3 and get the output. So it's always a good practice to write something like enter the value or enter an entity so, or anything, you know, anything, something like that. Okay, let me try something like this. Now here what I'm doing is I'm explicitly converting the type of the input to integer, right? So let me try something like this, GPREC. It will throw an error. The reason why it throws that, see, let's see what kind of error it is throwing. Value error, invalid literal for int with base 10. So what does it mean? Like what you're getting the file is that you are giving an integer. Like whatever the input you're taking, convert it to an integer, right? But if in the input, what are having A string. So that is the reason to throw an error because a string cannot be converted into an integer, right? That is the reason it is throwing an error, okay? If you give some, uh, you know, uh, 0.6, something like that, the string still throw an error. Why is it so? Because it is not an integer, right? That is the reason. Let us give some integer value. It will work perfectly well, okay? You don't have to write it integer only, you know? You can write it to flow also, something like this. Five. To 5.0, okay. Uh, uh, something like what else do we have? Let's write float with some floating point value 5.6. It works, okay. Yeah, and of course, the type also will change according to based on uh, what sort of input we are giving, okay. Not based on what sort of input we are giving, based on how we are typecasting it, okay. So, that is a simple thing that you need to remember. Get back to strings. So very really, yeah, here. Okay. So the length of the string can be found with uh, the length function. Okay. So how do we do that? Uh, we take a length string. It's not like you always have to take something like, you know, pi, and then you have to take like. You don't have to do that always. Instead of doing all of this, you can just simply uh, write something like, keep it that way, and let's write in some other cell. See, sorry, length of height. Okay, it will still get the same result. Okay, you don't have to write uh, the entire string in a variable, then give the variable as a parameter. You don't have to do that, you can just simply write it as the string itself, you can give it as a parameter. Okay. I hope you're following me. And also, so this is something that we uh, we can try, you know. Hello. Into five. This hello will be printed five times, OK? See? This is something that is allowed in C. Uh, I mean, it's allowed in Python. But if you want to do the same thing in uh, C, what would we do? For in i is equal to 0, i less than 5, i plus plus. And then again, we have to write something like printf, hello, something like this, right? This is what we do in C. But you don't have to do that in Python. You All that you see for this, all the things that you wrote in like two lines of code, is just written in like a single line, you know. 
Lengthwise meaning can be conveyed in a single line. And that is the reason Python is very flexible. Okay. Well. An in operator is used to check the presence of a character or a string in a given string. Okay. Uh, how do we write this now? Okay, let's check. If I in hi. You are doing the thing. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. See now, what I'm what did I what I did was you know uh, we are checking for the presence of the uh, string or in this case it's just a character uh, the presence of the character i in the given string. Okay. It returns a true or false value. If i is present in hi, it returns the true value. And if the condition, which means the condition is true, right? So the if condition has become true, and thus the statement will be executed. Okay. So this was the membership operator that uh, we did not discuss in the previous class, which I told you to hold on to. And yeah, here is how it works. I not in. Hello. It is still. Oh, you're doing great. Okay. Just so that you would just see some difference. That's the reason I did it. If I'm not in hello, then this is what you'd get. So, what is that? You know, it's just quite simple. You know, I is not present in hello, which is true, right? I does, is not present in hello. That's the reason it does well. Okay. That is how this, uh, you know, membership operator works. Okay, so strings do have indices. I think we already noticed this. I think in previous class we discussed. So we did. Okay. We already discussed that the uh, strings. So how do we do that? Let us write something as is equal to. Hello, amazing people out there. Right. Okay. So now I can try something like uh, 15. 15. It runs perfectly well because index 15 is there in this. <laughs> That's very sweet. Thank you. Hello. Hello to you too, Jay. Anyways, so hello, amazing people out there. So in this, don't ask me where exactly it exists. There are many E's out here. But we, uh, you know, if you want to count, if you are so patient enough, you can just sit down and count how many, you know, and this is that and where which e this e exactly signifies okay but if you try to do something like this so 55 it will throw an error the error is in the string index is out of range which means let's check what is the length of the string okay first of all so that uh, it will give a picture of what we are dealing with so okay. the string's length is 31 so if you try to access some uh, index number 55, why? Because the string length itself is 31. OK, it's cracking. I'm sorry. I did not notice. OK, OK. I'm so sorry. Uh, so is it OK now? Let me also know if it is OK. It's probably because of my network. Sorry. Okay, thank you. But you don't have to call me, ma'am. You can just call me, Maja. That'll be fine. Thank you so much for letting me know. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, yes, the string, I will throw this index out of bounds error. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm getting back to Java. I'm sorry about it. So, yeah, I will throw an index error. It's because the index is out of range. You see the string length. Okay, we are getting confused. So we will just simply write it here once. Length of S. In the length of the string is 31. Okay. But here we are trying to call uh you know 55th index. Some element present at the 55th index. 
So of course that index doesn't exist, right? So that is only confined up to zero to thirty. So it's one error. But if even if you try to call something like this, let me show something like this. It will still throw an error. You may think, he come on, the, uh, the string length itself is 31, then why it isn't, uh, it, you know, why can't we access it? The thing is, you all have to remember, my dear friends, you, uh, the string length is 31, which means it will be up to 0 to 30 only. Okay. You can, if you want, you can just sit down and count how many are there, 0 to 30. All right, let us take something very simple, some small length. Um, A, Z, A, B, C. Okay. So, uh, the length of A is okay. The length of A is three. Okay. Now, if you try to do something like this, sorry, A of zero. Any particular reason why it is 30 or 31? Yeah, that is what I'm trying to say here, uh, mistake. So what happens is the range usually in any programming language, usually what happens is the indices start from 0 and the value of the last index will be n minus 1. If the length of an array or length of a string or length of a list, anything, if you are dealing with length, then its range, if it is, if its length is equal to n, then its range will be from 0 to n minus 1. Okay, we do not include the n. So let us see. Okay, uh, I'm running this. So at 0 the index, it's a. At uh, first index, it's b. At index 2, it is c. Okay, so if we try, see that is it, right? The length is 3, which means it has three characters and the three characters stay at the indices 0 1 2 if you try to, yes exactly the uh, at the second index the answer is c yes you are right so that is the reason now if we try to access something like a is equal to uh my god i'm sorry i'm so used to you yes so if you try to access something like a is equal to three, it's quite meaningless because and the itself has got its length itself is three, which means it has only three characters. So if it has three characters, its last index value would be two. If we are trying to access some three uh, third index, then it means that you are trying to access some fourth character which doesn't exist in the string itself. So that is the reason it is row and error. Okay. Now is that made clear? Or do you have any more questions? Is it clear? Do you want to explain it again? Because this concept of indexing, it is very important because in the next uh, you know, topic that we are going to deal with, it is called a slice. It may sound very really non-technical, the word slice, but uh, yeah, it is one of the major things. Like, uh, you know, you get asked about it in quite a uh, lot of exams. You know, you uh, will ask about it in the place. You know? So, if just make sure you uh, upload this concept, okay? Anyone? Yes. Uh, so, yes, now we will be dealing with uh, slicing. So, before I get into, you know, uh, coding part of it, just, just uh, let's quickly just go to the slide, okay? It took a lot of time to make this slide. Just kidding. Just let's go with the slide one, okay? Now, consider the following string, okay? About the index, so you can just see it here, okay? Like, uh, how the index indices work, I just want to like present it and just check it out. So we have a string, yes, which has the, these, you know, characters in it, A, B, C, D, E, F, D, H, I, J. So here index indices from 0 to 9, they are the uh, respective indices, okay? So now in the string slicing, this is the uh, syntax we have got. We write the string name, we mention the starting index, which in the index plus one and jam. Okay. Just don't get confused. So feel like what is this nonsense that I'm talking about? It may seem like very complex thing, but it's quite easy if you understand and if you pay attention. Okay. Now let me show you how this is done. Okay. We'll we will do one thing. We will simply execute whatever is there here and we'll check uh, whether the same output is achieved or no. Okay. 
we will do the same the same uh, we will use the same string we will use the same code and we'll check whether that runs or no and then let us test thousands okay then it will be like a game only if you cooperate with me if it's like on one you know it's in the monologue it will be a monologue you will not be able to understand okay i want it to be a dialogue yes so s is equal to a b c d e f g h i j yes that's a beautiful string out there and now what i'm saying here is like you know we have yes and i start with the square bracket and the first uh, there are like two uh, colon okay now the first number that i write before the first colon represents the starting index okay now let me write zero now the uh, middle number it's it uh, first let us just go with only two numbers okay we'll get to the third we'll get to the, this jump part is there right we'll get back to it later okay and this number after the colon like the second number it signifies the index of the last uh, index plus 1 let me show you how okay first of all you tell me at zero this you are clear with right is uh, is at the zero d at one c at two d at three if you are clear with that we can understand now mentioning four okay It will only display zero A B C D because it will display uh, it will display uh, characters from zero to four, excluding four. Okay, is that understood now? what happens is like uh you see you are mentioning some index that index will be included but the uh, index that you are mentioning after the uh, same, uh you know, colon that will go on till that but the fourth index will not be included okay now the length of this this string let us consider what is the length of this string this length. now if you write 10 it will not be line then the value becomes 10 It won't that won't consider. Yeah, of course. But if you write something like eleven, it will mean like you have to start from zero. It will go until ten. You have to go until ten. That means you have to print the character present at ten index also. Is there any character at ten index? No. So this code will not work. And that uh, that won't be considered. Which means it will go until nine, and it will be stopped there. Okay. Now, if you write something like this, it won't prove an error. Why is it? Because if nothing is mentioned, what it means is you have to go from start to end. Okay, nothing is specified, which means you have to go from start to end. So let us write something like this: zero to uh, six. Now, what would be the output? Let us say zero to six, right? So it is A B C D. Let's just check here. What do I say? It will it will be from zero to six, which means it will go on till n uh, six minus one, which means five. Means the character still this fifth index will be printed. So zero index uh, has got a, then one d, two d, three d. Yes, still five n. Three d, fourth e, fifth f. So it will be a d c d e n. Let's run it. Here you go. Okay. So till here it's clear, right? Let me change the values so that it won't really be confusing. Yes, if it is clear, then we can just uh change this from zero to something else, something else, something exciting. Or let us try something like this. Now first index we have B, right? So it will start from B, then go on till the fifth index. That is what is happening. So it's pretty simple, okay? Like when you are writing the second number, it will go on till the second, uh, whatever the number we are giving it, the second uh, position. Okay, actually, I guess your screen is lagging because I'm still able to see. Uh, it's you know in Zoom. Okay.
yeah i think it's because of my internet i don't know why my internet is really so i'm sorry about it now is it visible is it okay now or is that still lag okay yeah go to go thank you thank you for that okay so here we are uh, so just uh, let me just quickly uh, you know come back with that so 0 to 6 right so what happened Happens is it will go on till the sixth index, excluding the sixth, which means it will tell the characters till fifth index. Fifth index, whatever the uh, character it has got at the sixth index, that will not be considered. Okay. And here, what uh, I'm mentioning the first index itself, uh, uh, you know, the first number itself has one. So we'll start off with the at index. We'll start off with the index position one. What do we have it in that position one? We have got B, so it will go on B to C, D, E, and F. Okay. So yeah, that is what is happening here. Now let me write something like this. Okay. Uh, let me write something like S of minus one. So usually S of zero is we get A. Now if I write S of one, of course it's at first position I will be. Now, what if I write something like s of minus one? I want some uh, reply from you people. Do you think it will together, or what do you think will happen? Okay, you guess it is uh, I. Okay. Okay, you're close enough. Uh, yeah, it will J, which means uh, yeah, it's J. Yeah, you're right. So what happens is whenever you're taking a negative index, do Thing it will be throwing an error. It will never throw an error. So what happens here is, you know, it will go from the last index. So if you are writing minus one, which means it's the leftmost, which means the last index, totally last index. Okay. So which is the last index we have got? J. So this will be equivalent to if we just write it in the quotations. By the way, if you did not figure it out by now, hash means. Uh, you know, it's just commenting, You're writing it in comments, which means the compiler. Okay, not exactly compiler. It's actually the writer, but for uh, understanding, I'm just uh, saying it as compiler. Actually, uh, Python is interpreted language, which means it will, uh, you know, execute it line by line. Not like a, a entire code will not be executed at once. Like uh, if you, if it has got some error. Yes, that line will not be executed. Yeah, the uh, comment line will not be executed. That will be by the compiler. Like no matter what right there, it will be like I don't care about it. You know, that's what happens. So yeah, this will be equivalent to S of nine. Okay, it will be equivalent to S of n minus one basically. Oh my god. And n is the length of the string. N equal to length of this. Okay, I hope it was clear. Uh, are there any confusions? Because it is uh, an important topic. If you do not understand this, wouldn't say you would not be able to understand anything. It's not that. But if you are clear with these concepts, then it will be easier for you to understand the further concepts. Okay, please not call me ma'am. You can simply call me Maja. I'll be fine with it. Okay, so yes. I hope I'm being clear till now. Okay, now let us say uh, and analyze what output this is to five would give us. It's not exactly used to, but you know, we are used to it. Okay, two colon five. Eleven is to uh, okay. Eleven is to okay. Okay, what if we have something like that? Uh, then so we do not uh, you know enter with the. Three, uh, you know, giving three numbers, uh, you know, inside the square brackets. When we get into it, we'll try and execute, and we'll try what we get. Okay, we'll get back to it. Don't worry. Okay, but the thing is, uh, let us keep it slow because it's an important concept. That's the reason I'm taking my time by like signing. Let us take our time. Okay, don't worry. We'll get back to it. That was a nice question, by the way. Stay curious, and also you also try to, you know. Do it on your own. Just figure it out. It will help even more. But I'm not saying you wouldn't find it. I will. <laughs> okay. So now let us try and analyze why uh, the output is three in this case. Because as I told, 
it will start with the index index 2 and it will go on till 5 excluding 5 so what happens 2 3 and 4 okay so this is what is happening at 2 in we have c third index uh, d fourth index e so that is the reason i've got the output as c d and e okay so now let us take another one s of give nothing as input nothing as the first piece of and we're giving it a sign it has given us a b c d e as output why is it so as i told you if we give nothing as input it will consider it as zero okay if we do not give anything it will uh, be equivalent to zero which means it doesn't consider anything it will uh, think you okay, you did not mention anything i'll just take it from the start okay that is what is happening so that is the reason it will go on from the starting index which is zero and it will go on till um, five but in the fifth index uh character and the fifth, fifth index which means it will go on only till four okay that's what is happening that is the reason we have a b c d e okay we are good. and now we have s5 to nothing i also mentioned this if you do not mention anything it is equivalent to n which means the length of the string that means it will go to the end of the string okay it will just go until the end it will feel like okay you did not mention anything i'll just go till the end okay that is the reason we have l e h i j what do we have in the first pose index f and i told you it will go till the end of the string no matter what is existing there okay so that is the reason we have g h i j total the entire string is taken okay now as i told you now we have the let us try some negative indexing Basically, i told you it is n of uh if it is minus one then it is subtly signifying that s of n minus one you do remember it this way okay where n is equal to length of s okay you just remember it this way that way you wouldn't you know get confused so n minus one position is like the last index now last index is nothing but n minus one right that is the reason in the last index we have j that's the reason we got that as output now let us try with two Why is it so? The length is 10. Length is 10. Okay. 10 minus 2. What do we get is equal to 8. Right. So, what do we have at the index? I. Okay. So, that is the reason we have uh, f of minus 2 is equal to 8. Okay. Just simply remember, get a negative index. Just simply remember it as length of the string minus this is whatever is given here. Okay, remember that. It will be like, uh, you know, like a shortcut to remember. Or else you will be like, okay, minus second position, which means last index, uh, you know, from the last position, we have to take it to minus two. You will just get confused. But if I say like something like minus 10, you can't just sit like, you know, it will be uh, last J would be minus one, I would be minus two, H would be minus three. If, it has, if the string has like 100 numbers, would you just sit down and count each and every one of them? No, right? It will be difficult. So that is the reason. Just remember this formula. S of n minus. Uh, like uh, S of i. Uh, like Let me write, put it like this. Is equal to. Okay. Just remember this. Now the length of the string itself is 10. So I write minus 10. So the what would be. Uh, what if it's at like minus 9 is to minus 2? We will get to it. Just hold on to it. Because we are simply uh, just, you know, check out the basic things right now. I told you, as I told you, it's string a uh, slice. So check out. I'm taking it. People so completely do it. Okay? So we get to it. So, and, uh, so as I told you, as of i uh, minus i, it has n this i. So this length itself is 10. So we have track 10 from it. We'll get zero. What do we have in the zero position? A. So the reason we have the output as A. Okay. So about the questions.
let me come with this okay minus sign is to minus let's you know it's been a long time for me since the practical of this uh, slicing and everything so let us see i'm not i'm not sure okay we have this so what is minus nine let's check um well let us use formula once again and let's find out okay s of minus nine is equal in s of 10 minus nine is equal to s of 1. What do we have as 1? It is 3. And similarly, s of minus 2 is equal to s of n minus 2, which is equal to s of k. Isn't it? So now this is equivalent to differentiation, so it will be oh, no, it will be executed. At all system principles, I want them to be executed. That's the reason I'm writing it. Okay, like this. S of one is two, eight. That's also like both of us. How did you understand? Okay, so that is what has happened. Like it will take from the S of minus nine is nothing but minus nine is nothing but is equivalent to ten minus nine. It is the first index, okay? And minus 2 is equivalent to 8, as we mentioned. 10 minus 2, which is equivalent to 8. So this line of code is equivalent to this line of code, okay? If you are confused, if you are uh, something, if you are asked something like this in your examination, like, what would this result end? What would, I'm not sure uh, if you are having Python. So the secondary people, they do have Python. So I don't know which area you are from. Anyways, uh, in any exam or in any coding or no, certain exam or something, if you ever get asked a question like this, you can use it this way. You no, know? you can simply put it in this formula and you will you'll arrive at the answer. Okay, it's a bit more convenient to do. You know, instead of counting and counting, it will look uh, you know even bit confusing and also not look very you know productive way of doing it. So. You can even try something, uh, you know, many more things like this. It will be, uh, you know, helpful. I hope all of you are practicing it along with me. It will be a helpful people. Okay. Even others, I'd be really happy if you just come up with some questions like this. Even it will be like a decision for me also, you know. It's been quite a long time since I practiced things like these, you know. So, yeah, it will be even fun, you know, talking to you people. It's nice. Okay. So yeah, uh, now let us come to another interesting part of the slicing, where, as I mentioned here, get to the fly once, okay? I, as I mentioned here, uh, see, string name, start index, index, end index. Are you clear up to starting index and ending index, how we'll be using it? If you're clear with that, then we can go to the jump part, okay? So what happens in jumping, we will see. So what we are doing is, jumping is usually uh, used for, you know, skipping the uh, indices. OK? Uh, let me take an example. Uh, from 0 to 10. It's the whole string. Because 10 is the length of the string, we'll be considering the index 9. So that's the reason and that string will be printed. That is something that we have done in the past. So I think we are Clear with that. Got to that point. And now, let's write one. It will not make any difference. The reason behind that is, if you notice, what is happening here? Like I am saying, you add plus one to the starting index. And whatever you get as a result, the character in that index. I have another doubt. What if a negative and a positive number or something like that? Okay, you can try that also. That will also work. Is that understood? Did you understand? We tried this also. That will also work. Why is it so? Because this is equivalent to minus nine is nothing but it is equivalent to one, right? You don't have to worry about it. Ask questions. That's the reason we are taking the sessions so that you'd ask the questions. You don't have to be uh, nervous about it, okay? So yeah, 
So time is which is equal to one in this context. So that's the reason this is equivalent to this. So what is happening here? We start from the index one, and when we have b. We go to uh, two, but we do not include two, right? So that is the reason c will not be included. Only two will be. Uh, uh, I mean, character at the index one will be printed. But if you write something like this, it will not give you any error. Uh, I'm sorry, it will not give you any output. Nor will it give any throw any error. It is valid, but you will get nothing. Like, come on, you see, you are starting from that index, but you are going till that index. I mean, you have to include the one, right? The character at the index index one. So that will not be considered, and it will not give you any error, uh, any error, nor any output. Okay. This is valid. That is that was a valid question. Don't be nervous about it. Yeah, that was a good question. You can, uh, yeah, you can use both negative indices and uh, this also. But if you give something like you know minus one and is two, it will not give any uh, output. The reason because now these two will tell you. I'm sorry. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Print of uh, nine. Sorry, s of nine is to two, which means what are you telling to the compiler? I mean, what are you telling to the interpreter is that you have to start from the index nine and go on till index two, which makes no sense, right? Like if you're going it in the reverse format, that would have been different, right? So that's the reason this why this won't work. We will see. Okay, like you see, what happens here is. So when you're writing something like this, now what I'm saying it is, it's like a loop. Okay, it's just like we're uh, writing in a loop. What are we are we doing? Like s of zero first will be printed, and then first s of uh, it's like for i is equal to zero, i less than ten, i is equal to I plus one. Print, print f. So far, okay. It's not syntactically correct, but that is what uh, I hope you are trying to. You understood what I am trying to say. Percentage C, my so far. I am trying to write it in terms of C language. Okay, this is what we would do if you were to write it in C language. So this plus one signifies this. Okay. Is that understood? So, so that is the reason. If you don't mention this plus one also by default, this two is C, but got it. Okay. Okay, you are not familiar with C. The reason why I am, uh, you know, telling in C is because that uh, most of us are like, you know, we had C in our first year, so that is the reason most of the people who relate to it. That's the reason I'm using C. If you're not familiar with C, just ignore that part. If you just try to focus on this, okay? Though you write uh, its value is one by default. Though you mention it, you don't mention it. It's one by default, okay? Now, if you write to uh, try something like two, it will be oh, it'll here also. It will be two, okay? So what ha what should happen here? Let's run the code. So let us analyze what is happening. Yeah, you're familiar with C. Good. Then it's, uh, you can. It will be easier. Basically, it will be easier. Okay. So yeah. So zero at zero, then we have yay. Now what are we saying? Like don't go, go to like don't go to the next uh, index immediately. Go to the index which is like at plus to zero, plus two to zero, and go to that index. Okay. Like there's something like this. Try to analyze what will happen in a C program when you write something like this. Okay. So go to the zero plus two index, which means second index. Go to C. C is printed, and then to two plus two index, which is four. Go to fourth index. What we have in fourth index E. Then again go to four plus two index, which uh, has got G there. So go to G, and then again go to G plus two index, eighth index, which is which has I. Then A plus two is ten and has got no index. I mean no character there. This is the end of the string, so it will stop. Okay, is that understood, or do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Please 
of short and if you're trying to ask me about the negative jumping we will get to it just hold on to that for a while but with this as long as this is concerned do you have any questions okay I take it as you have no questions so let's move on if you do have any questions kindly post it in the chat box we will see that we will take a look Yes, instead of I++, plus plus, it's I2++. Plus plus. Yes, that is what it is. But I just wanted to make sure you understand the difference. That's why I wrote it like this. But if you want, you can write it like I plus is equal to. You can do something like this also. Okay. But it will be confusing. So that is the reason I specified it like very clearly. Okay. So that everybody would understand. Okay. If you do not do the uh, shortcuts, it will be a bit confusing. So this is how it is. Okay. I am if you understand how, what is happening if you are running it in c language if you try to understand the code then this is nothing for you people okay and if you write three tell me what would happen let's analyze again zeroth index is a starting index then add plus three which is third index what do we have we have d and then go to uh, plus three which is sixth index we have g oh, sorry g and then next six plus three nine at ninth index we have j and nine plus three is twelve we do not have a 12th index because 9th is the last index of the string. Yes, it's I3 plus plus. It's actually, technically, it's not correct to write like an I3 plus plus. Incremented by 3. Yes, that is correct uh, way of saying it. You're saying something, just try to make sure you're, uh, the way you are saying it also correct because that is also very important. I'm not saying you're saying it wrong, but with the concept that you're trying to convey, the concept, it's exactly correct. I'm glad you're following it. Thank you so much. So now let's give it as two. Okay. Now you can do the same thing negative indices also again. Okay. But the reason is that. Do the same thing with the negative indices as well. Why is it? Because as I told you, s of minus i is similar to n minus i. So 0 is equal, uh, minus 10 is equivalent to 10 minus 10, which is 0. So uh, minus 1 is equivalent to uh, s of uh, n minus i. So these both are very similar, okay? okay even minus 1 is considered. Is that understood or do I have to repeat myself? Yeah. So minus one, is, what is it? Okay, I'm sure you understood that. So no need to repeat it again. Do I have to? Okay. If that is understood, yeah. Good, let's go on. Now let's go on with something like n is to 0 is to minus 1. Now let's understand what is happening here. Okay. Okay, so let us see. So now what are we seeing? Go on from 10th index to 0th index. Like how do we do that? 10. But don't consider 10. Uh, sorry, don't consider 0. See, I have to you, whenever you are writing some index at the, uh, you know, the second number, whatever we are giving inside the square brackets, do not consider the second number. I think I already mentioned it here also, right? Like, what are the characters there? It will be moved from right to left. Yes, correct. That's what is happening. So, as I told you, 2 is to 5. When we took 2 is to 5, I told you, you have to go from 2, 3, 4. You, do not, you should not consider 5. The same thing applies here also. You should start from 10, but do, go on, but do not consider 0. Okay? So now what are we doing? We are starting on 10th index. Next, go to the index. There should be 10 minus 1. Okay? What is it? 9th index. Go to 9. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It shouldn't be 9, uh, 10 exactly. It should be 9 actually. But as I told you, even if you give some 11 or something like that also, it will work. Because 
if you give something that is index which is uh, bigger than the actual ending of the index, the last it will still work okay it should actually be nine so yeah nine and then go to eight then to seven then to six five four three two one but don't consider zero okay that's what is happening now if i try to write something like this what happens we are going from ninth index then to the seventh index we have h then to fifth index we have f then to third we have t then to b uh, first index we have b and then it again comes to minus one don't say you have to again go to minus one or something like that it doesn't work that way okay that is it. we come to the end of the string and that is the end okay so you can uh, do the same thing with uh, you know negative indices also again as i told you it will give us some out let me just write it off quickly so that even you will be clear i'll be clear even it's like a division for me also because it has been a long time as i told you see find it equivalent to minus 1 right minus 1 is equivalent to 10 minus 1 is 9 minus 10 is equivalent to 10, 0 And minus two is common thing, so they will yield you the same output. Okay, so this is how slicing is done with both uh, positive indices, negative indices. I hope you are clear with just whenever you are confused with the negative indexing, if you are not sure how negative indexes work, then just write it equivalent positive indices. How do you do that? With the formula that I mentioned here. Okay, s of minus i it can be written as s of n minus i. What is n here? It is the length of the string. So here, just simply ignore this. Okay, that is just an example. So yeah, that is how you are uh, doing uh, dealing with the string slicing. And just remember, slicing is not just confined to strings alone. It is uh, also used when you are dealing with lists as well. Okay. If use of slicing like how slice can happen in level programming. Okay, that's a good question. Even I'm not sure about it. Uh, I'll get back to you regarding that. Okay. See, even I'm a student. Even I'm learning all these things. I'm uh, in my second year, so even I'm learning. Uh, but sure, that is a very good question, and I'm starting to think about it. So I'll get back to you uh, with the answer by the next class. Okay. Will that be good? Yes. Thank you so much. Anyway, thank you for your question. We'll get back to it uh, in our next session. Okay. So yeah, let's get back to the PPT. It's been idle for quite a long time. Okay, so yeah, this is the string slicing. We will be using it with lists also. Okay, uh, when we discuss next thing that we are going to discuss is lists. So yeah, here we are list. Okay, before we go on with list, this is one of the data structures we have. So Before I go start with this, let me open my uh, previous PowerPoint presentation, our very very first session, where we had the introduction to the uh, you know Python programming. We just had an intro session, so let's get that PPT once, so you'll understand what uh, exactly we are dealing with. You'll understand that, okay? Yes, here we are. So as I as we as I mentioned, uh, there are many data types available. There are three numerical data types. We have dictionaries. We have boolean. Boolean is just true or false. Okay, there is nothing much uh, to discuss about it. It uh, just holds a one bit memory. This uh, you know when some arithmetic operation is done, not exactly arithmetic. When some relational operation is performed, like inside if condition, we write something like you know if two is less than three. Okay, that will return a boolean value. That either the true or false. That is the boolean value. Okay, so yeah, and we have set, we have sequence types. In sequence type, we have got three, and we discuss one of it. We have been discussing one of that for quite a long time now. For the past three sessions, we have been discussing about strings. Okay, so and the other two types are lists and tuples. Though they seem very similar, there are many differences between them. If you get into the depths of Python, if you are writing Python as your first language in, uh, you know, in your CVs, I'm pretty sure there's a chance of, uh, you know, people asking you questions regarding differences of lists and tuples. 
So we will be discussing about them. But if you want to learn in detail about uh, you know lists and tuples, you can get back to me personally. But uh, since the time is a constraint here for us, uh, we will be just discussing the basic uh, differences between them. Okay. Uh, so first of all, let's uh, get started with lists. Okay. Cool. Okay. So a list is, list is a data structure in Python. That is mutable or changeable. So mutable and changeable are quite the synonym, synonyms. That's the reason I put it there. And ordered sequence of elements. By the word ordered, I mean they have indices. Okay. We do not uh, like just like strings have got indexes. Indices. Okay. Index is singular. Indices is plural. So okay. So uh, since yeah, just like strings. Lists also have index, okay? Each element or value that is inside of a list is called an item. It's just the basic terminology, okay? Lists are strings are defined as characters between the quotations. Lists are defined by having values between square brackets. And they are separated with commas, okay? It is similar to arrays, but lists are heterogeneous. Which means the list can contain any type of data in it, okay? So if you remember the C language that we uh, all learned in our first year, uh, I'm pretty sure you all remember this, you know, all of us, my heart depth, but there is homogeneous, you know, data type, arrays of homogeneous data structure, etc. you know. I hope you recall it, okay? So yeah, by homogeneous, we uh, mean that it can hold data of any one data type, okay? Like if you have declared an array as an integer type, all the values that you store inside the array must be indices. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty sure you remember all of that. Yeah, sure. So, in a similar way, like in array, when to declare it as an integer, then every data that you are inserting into it has to be an integer. If not, it will throw an error or you know some other unexpected may come out. It just depends on what sort of uh, you know language we are dealing with and the platform we are dealing with many things okay so yeah in array only one type of data type uh, one type of data is allowed but in lists lists are like if you want to compare it with the uh, you know c language i wouldn't say it's quite a, a good comparison but just for the sake of understanding we can call it as a structure okay if you remember the structures in c language what do we used to do is we used to write a, define a structure and we used to mention all these you know variables inside the structure right to specify the arrays the same way as java yeah yeah the same way uh, you need to specify the array the same way as java yeah like you mean in the c language yes sure but in python if you want to deal with uh, arrays you do not you cannot do it directly you have to import some libraries we will discuss about all of the all those when we come to libraries in Python. But if you are uh, talking about C language, yes, you are right. We need to specify the uh, If you are declaring, the declaration syntax may differ. Yeah, import the library. Yeah, we will be importing the pandas and numpy. So it's, uh, we will get to that later. But for now, let's stick with this, okay? We are just making comparisons with C language. <laughs> let's make... Uh, yeah, in Java also the syntax differs. Okay, the syntax uh, that we used to that we use in declaring C language arrays in C and arrays in Java is different because C language is a functional oriented language. Okay, but whereas languages such as Python, Java, all these are object oriented languages, which means uh, everything here is about classes and objects. And you know, when we discuss the object oriented concepts we will be much familiar with it, okay? So let's not uh, confuse you people. Let's keep it simple. So for now, list is just like array, but the only difference is that you can have any type of data in it. Like, you know, you can have like, if you see the, in, uh, you know, example, you can write L is equal to one. It is an integer, H, I, I, it is a string. True, it's a Boolean. Don't think it is some sort of a variable or something like that. It is a Boolean value. Okay, please uh, try to recall. It is a Boolean. Okay, 5.4 is a floating uh, value. You see, that is how you, if you want to give something, you know, while interpreting it, like as a uh, programmer, if you want to 
write some list this is how we do it okay but if you want to write something uh, if you want to take input from the user let's see uh, list is equal to map str input all this line of code i'll show you this i'll show you this we will get to this i'm going too fast too, too slow or do you want me to slow down or do you want me to explain any of the concepts again i'd be really happy to help you people i want some interaction from you guys okay that's all i'd expect from you people. we don't want you to come with the entire knowledge we wouldn't expect you um, expect from that any of you okay all that we want you is to talk to us okay thank you for the response okay i ran this already so that's the reason it's showing that okay so as i told you a list can have n number of values with n different data types okay you do not have to be specific like uh, you know a list is only confined to this type of data type it doesn't work like that okay you can though you uh, write all the data in it of similar data type that will also work fine but if you want a different type of data types in a single like you know set you can go with list but now let us say you want some array sort of a thing you know like you want every uh, element in it like to be a string type then you can write it as list map str like mapping is like you know you are writing it like continuously like you know store all of these in uh, this particular list or something like that okay i'm not exactly sure of this word map so i'll uh, tell you what this word keyword map exactly is doing here i learn about it and then i'll tell okay but there is str we are writing okay let us instead of writing str let us write int okay because int is like this the most simple data type ever okay so let's go with that for a while so now here i have specified integer which means all the inputs that i'm taking are of the type int and i want them to be taken as input and how do i want them to be taken as by splitting them with a comma okay like every element that is split with a comma will be taken as one item okay let's do this now i write wrote 5 then i wrote 6 Five, sorry, two. Then again, zero. Then one. Something like this. Okay. Now, I if I just check it, if I click on enter, now I have a list of five different values. What are those five different values? Five, six, two, zero, one. How are they separated? With separated with commas, right? Like five is considered as one item. Six is considered one item. How did we consider it? Because we specified that we uh, each element. Split with a comma should be taken as one element. Now this thing will be will come handy when we are dealing with strings. You know, if I say him, her, his, hers. So now you see. Now you'll understand. Like if it's a comma, the string before comma is one string. After it, it's another string. What must encounter? Okay, like basically between two commas, whatever everything that is there in between, that is a string. You just it as an item. Okay. If I mention something like this, you know, now let's say add to it. Now, if I write like something like uh, GDC at it, GPRC dot AC dot in. Don't think it is our official mail ID and don't mail to it. Okay. If you do not get any reply, I'm not responsible for it. I'm just taking it as an example. Okay. Now you see the string with uh, you know before at rate is taken as one string. String is taken after uh, you know at rate is taken as an other string, and those two are taken as two different items and stored inside this list. Okay. S print s and let us let us try uh, try the type of string you know type of the uh, list yes print type yes okay oh first I have to give it right I forgot D D S C at rate 
GPRC. What did I type? Oh my. At rate. Null. At rate. AP. At rate. India. If you leave me, I'll go to the continents also. So let's not. See? So GDSC is one list. Uh, one item. GPRC is one item. Kanul is another item. AP is another item. India is another, another item. Why is it? Because all these are the different strings that are separated by different, uh, you know, attribute symbol. And what is the type of the uh, variable? Yes, it is of the class list. Okay. Now, why did it show class? We will get back to it later. Okay. Don't worry about it. We will get back to it. Here we are. Okay. Okay. So, did you understand it so far? Or are there any questions? Or do you want to ask anything? Let's just have a breaking session sort of a thing for like a couple of minutes till 7.55 and then we'll continue. Okay. Do you have any questions? Anything regarding anything? You can ask questions or you can just simply say hi to everyone. Those who ever are present here, you can just simply just type a hi in the chat box or you know, give a shout out to some people that you are friends with, anything. Just a conversation, just interact. Input to string also split to We have, uh, of course, if we take it directly, this will also come space and it will be okay. So, okay, if that is what you're thinking, you see, if instead of that, if you give a space now, let us see how it works. Okay, the word str itself is uh, what change what is changing the you know input into string, okay, and the split function, whatever you told right now, right? Uh, like you know. Um, so what happens here is now huh? map uh, makes the input to string. No, uh, no, it doesn't work like that. Okay, if you take the space, let us see what happens. Okay, GPREC. I'm very obsessed with my college. That's the reason I use it wherever I go. Okay, um, one, two, three, ABC. Okay, it still works, right? Whenever we have a space, you know, it still works. Now, what happens is whenever it encounters a white space, the word before and after the white space will be taken as two different items. Okay. It still works. See how split split itself means that like you're telling the interpreter, okay, why you do one thing. Like whenever you find a space, that word before it, take it as a key item, uh, you know, take it as an item. And the word after the space, take it as a key, sorry, take it as an item until you find another white space. Okay, that is what it signifies. I think what map does is that I told you, right, list also has index. I told you, no. So I think what the word map does is that, like this word right now, like see this word GPREC, that word will be mapped to the index zero. So I think that is what this word map does here. Okay. But I'm not quite sure about it. So I will check it once and I'll get back to you about it. Okay, don't worry. We will, we will get back to it. All the doubts that you have, even if you have any doubts after, you know, after the session, if you're there in the uh, GPRC WhatsApp group, uh, GDS WhatsApp group in the machine learning WhatsApp group, just, quick, uh, just ping us there. If you have any sort of questions, we'll be happy to help. Okay. I think that's what map function is doing here, everyone. What it might be doing is that, it will be mapping each and every input that we are taking to the respective index values. Like, you know, one after the other, it will be mapping. Okay. Like, now, if you write S of 1. Okay, which query are you from? You are from GPREC? Are you from GPREC? No issues if you are not from that group. Uh, like, you can also put it in the comment section here. We wouldn't mind. Okay, you're from the college itself. Okay, so which year are you from? May I ask? I'm sorry if you're senior. 
Uh, which year are you from, brother? Okay, meanwhile, so yeah, that might be the thing like the map uh, word, what it might be doing is uh, what it's doing is that it's just you know taking the uh, mapping the input to the corresponding index value. Okay, one after the other. Okay, you are in 12th class. Okay, so you are not from uh, Polarity Engineering College, Karnul. You are not from that college. Okay. No issues. Actually, this uh, entire streaming, we have done it on the behalf of our college. It's, it was for our college students, but no issues. You can continue. No issues, okay? You can still continue. We are so glad uh, you have shown interest. In such an early age, we are so glad you are interested. Keep going, okay? Yeah. So, that's oh, it's okay, it's okay. You don't have to be sorry. I'm very glad, uh, you know, the new people, like, you know, people from your classes are so interested. If we might have done all of this, we might have been uh, doing great by now. <laughs> I'm so glad you people are showing interest in new technologies. Good for you people. Okay. So, this is what might be happening, okay? Let's quickly go back. Where did we stop? Okay. Yes, here we are. Okay, so Jay, are you clear with what we have dealt so far? We have dealt with so far. And also the rest of the people. I'm only taking his name because he is the one who is responding. I don't have to take your name if you have, you're also responding. Okay, so kindly respond. Okay, so yeah, this is what is happening. And also some arithmetic operations can also be performed on lists. Like if you add one list to another, you can add repeat the list. How do we do that? Let's let's check. Okay. Like I have a list L1 is equal to um, A comma one comma four point five comma one two three something like this. Mm, something like B comma 14, sorry, 15, it turned out to be 15, fine, 5.9. The answer of the slicing question, can you please explain? Okay, which slicing question exactly? Could you just uh, specify it? Like, uh, could you just write it down once again? Because I really have very memory, so just kindly, uh, could you please repeat what your question was? I mean, which slicing question exactly? Could you specify? Ah, yeah, real life. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. I'll just do one thing. I'll write it somewhere out here. Okay, I'll just write. Of slicing okay I've mentioned it here so now I will not forget even if I forget GPRC people somebody just remind me I want to answer this video okay I'm very happy that you have come and you're attending the sessions and you're showing the interest I'm really happy okay thank you so much and I'll definitely get back to you about it okay okay so now we have L1 plus L2 I write it here, the compiler will clean. Okay? It is still valid. Why is it still valid? Because arithmetic operators can be performed on lists as well, irrespective of their length. Okay? And irrespective of what they have uh, in their data types. Even you can write something like the anything. Okay? Any two lists, irrespective of their length, irrespective of their contents, can be added like this. And when you add them, the output, if you're trying to display, they will be appended okay like what happens like you write this entire list will be first and next all these contents will be appended and if you're trying to assign it some other uh what do you say if you're trying to assign it with to some other variable then it will be assigned and then you again have to print it without printing if i try to just keep it like that it's of no use okay 
so this is how it works arithmetic operators are also allowed okay mm, now again so i have to write l4 is equal to l2 l1 star 2 now if i want to print l4 if you notice here like this one is equivalent to now if you understood the plus as you know addition operator on list then this is quite simple to understand now this is equivalent to l1 plus l1 okay that is it right that is what we do usually like if you are right multiplying number with some number then what are you doing you are adding the number to the number itself that many number of times that sounded very confusing okay now let us say if you are writing 5 into 2 then what does it mean you are adding 5 to 5 itself twice like you're doing 5 plus 5 if it is 5 to 4 it is like 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 you do it four times same way like l in l1 into 2 is l1 plus l1 okay but here what are we doing the plus four operator what does it do it just simply appends okay it will multiply each and every element by two no 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 not here not here like here that's not what it means here what is happening is this entire list is there right it will be you know appended to itself okay each element is repeated twice it's not multiplied here it's repeated here in case of list if you are saying about a usual uh, multiplication multiplication is different here multiplied by two means you see like uh, each element appears twice okay okay don't don't get confused each come on if the multiplication is to be happen if you want to write the multiplication now you tell me a is a string right even one two three is a string how do we multiply a string with uh, two how do we do that multiplication of strings is not possible now nah? it's meaningless if you're trying to multiply some integer with an integer integer with a floating value it'll make sense right it's meaningless to multiply a string with a number you wouldn't get any uh, value for it right yes or no yes it's okay no problem just uh, try to analyze okay good that you ask questions again where are we okay so yeah so multiplication repeats a list functions such as index count length are used on list just like string okay this is the assignment for you guys for today i don't know how many of you did the previous assignment i asked you all to try all the methods that i discussed in list oh, i'm sorry in on strings i asked you to perform those methods on strings so that you'll understand the purpose of each and every method string methods i don't know how many of you did that nobody uh, got back to me but yeah uh, if you understood how the uh, functions index count and length are used the same way the same uh, you know functions can be performed on lists as well for instance let us take just uh, actually it's not really class, try to do this yeah sure no no issues if you want the previous classes video it's available on youtube you can just go and check it out again okay and you can uh, try the length l1 so now the length function list refers to the number of items okay so now how many items do we have here we have four items now so four its length is four okay quite simple that is the reason you know in python almost everything is like very similar to the language that we use so that is reason if you're trying to find like index or count you know you can just simply uh, you know understand it quite easily because you understand the word count what do we mean by count like usual counting you know len yeah it's just short and you know just it has to be length but we are just simply writing it as length that is how the syntax is but you understand what is meant by length length of string what do you mean by the how many number of elements are there how many units are there okay quite simple okay yes yeah so these are some of the uh, list methods that we have okay len runs the uh, returns the number of items in the list sum returns the sum of the items in the list 
okay this is only applicable when you are dealing it uh, if the list is an integer list okay usually min returns the minimum of, of the items in the list max returns the maximum of the items in the list okay i want you all to do all these methods okay because we have uh, we do not have sufficient time to discuss each and every of them okay because i as i promised i want to discuss the differences between lists and tuples it's usually an interview question i heard it from some of my mentors so that is the reason okay so kindly try out all these i also gave the syntax like you know what are the returns what do they return i also gave that and also it doesn't matter you know like what is the return type unless it's a void or no it's usually i i mentioned it specifically here like what it returns so it wouldn't be a problem for you to try okay kindly try all of you okay yes so append uh, adds x to the end of the list okay so yeah here's something that i wanted to tell you people let me open it because i thought we'd be running out of time so i just made a yeah print type of l yeah here you just can see how it is you know take a look see here we have slicing again slicing of lists you see you see that so that's why i tell you slicing is very important because it is used everywhere and the purpose of it in the real life uses we will discuss in the next class okay see so remember that <laughs> okay so length of l so appending so when is appending used as i told you you see where is it where is it where is it yeah here i told you we have to take only string okay now if i try to write something into zero and now if i try to write something like okay 12 space gdsc 14 something like this it will throw an error why is it so because it was fine till we entered 12 because 12 is an integer but we specified here we want an integer and here we are here we are giving a string right gdsc you can't Uh, convert it into uh, you know the word gdsc is a string and you can't convert it into its equivalent integer right it makes no sense so that is the reason it will throw an error okay so i told you now this particular list yes will contain only the values of only one type okay but what if i want some list of different data types but at the same time i want it to be taken at run time how do we deal with that so that is where this append comes into rescue okay so now we have uh, l123 and we are writing hello that is appended and here is the output okay okay so yeah now here we have insert and at third index this particular word will be inserted you see it's zero thing next to is a uh, second index uh, sorry zero one two and this is the third index this hello is not being replaced it is being uh, at that position that means you push the hello aside and you insert the hi okay that is what is happening here insert 10 comma 23 see now you if you notice 10 there is no such index as 10 in the given list Have only zero, one, two, three, four. The next index will be fifth index, but do not have a, a tenth index in this list, right? But no issues. Even if you mention something uh, out of uh, within fifth index, also it will append it to the last. Okay. So just try to remember the difference between append and insert. Okay. Append. Whenever you are trying to use append, let me write it. Okay. append is equivalent to l dot insert are you sorry insert at the end of the like let us say n is the length of the string let us say okay the indices will be from 0 to n minus 1 now i want it at the nth index are you understand what i am trying to say here its length is equal to This is equal to three usually here. So last index would be uh, last index would be two. Now I want it at the index three. 
comma what do i want the string hello okay now this one will be equivalent to this one okay like insert means you can uh, you know insert the given string or a given value or any given value at one particular index but whereas append means you only uh, insert it to the end you know you're just appending it you're just joining it to the end okay that is what is happening okay now you see now here this is what i want you know l uh, is equal to int input enter size okay we are entering the size so for range i think we discussed range function didn't we okay if we did, can we insert multiple values in different indexes at the same time at different indices at the same time okay you want to insert at different in indices okay like this if you want to write insert and uh, you want to give two indices and give two as a no it's not possible you can write two different indices uh, okay you can't do it i don't think you can but yeah you can explore i don't think it's possible like you know usually what happens is insert is a method usual like normal programming if you want to talk it is a function okay and every fun function or method it has a set of arguments arguments are the values which you pass to the function okay then internally it will uh, do the function and then re return the result okay so each okay let me try let me try it for your satisfaction okay can you see miss okay birappa okay uh, can you see this okay so see l is the list we have taken and here we wrote insert uh, see we wrote 10 comma uh, 23 comma 7 and what is the type of error that it is throwing insert expected two arguments got three which means usually what happens with the methods or functions is that it has some some set of number of arguments okay like if you are familiar with c language if you have dealt with functions it will be easier for you to understand okay methods and functions are similar like methods is another name for functions okay so they have arguments some number of particular uh, some particular number of arguments are only given as you know parameters okay some values only if you go beyond three it will throw an error okay that is what is happening but if you want to do something like you know l dot insert at two comma hi you can do it okay that is allowed we can write two different statements and perform okay that is it okay quite simple okay so now x is equal to int input enter size so what am i doing now i want uh, some n number of elements as input so i am taking it from the user and uh, let me run this now i want six values what there was i okay six values okay now i can write six different inputs what shall i write here i am taking like in the run time like you know multiple values as input here i am taking okay <coughs> interrupt me kernel yeah this is how you interrupt the kernel okay you can interrupt it any time i'm so sorry oh my god Okay, so basically, what I was trying to do is, I just wanted to change the, you know, uh, I took x one as equal to int of input, which means every input which again has to be integer, right? I didn't want that. I want to take multiple values. I wanted in string uh, type, so that is the reason I just wanted to, in, uh, you know, stop it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, interrupted by user. So you know. you have to whenever you are trying to do something whenever some error is thrown please kindly don't uh, you know just skip the error just try to read and analyze what kind of error is being thrown okay so what is the error keyboard interrupt interrupted by 
the user. Like I am the user, I am the replicator. That's what the interruption is about. Okay. So whenever you encounter some errors like this, kindly make sure you are reading them and uh, you understand what sort of error is thrown. Okay. So that uh, makes you understand the language better. Okay. So I am taking six. Now I take one. Ah, uh, sorry. Um, hi. One, three. At rate. 5.7 okay so these are taken as different uh, you know strings and put it here now let us check what is the difference from here and here okay so here what did we do we just wrote the entire thing in a single line uh, single line now what are we doing here we are just mentioning it we want it to be split with some uh, we call it as delimiter. Okay, whatever the parameter that we are giving inside the split, we call it delimiter. If you're mentioning at rate, at rate is a delimiter. If you're uh, mentioning space, space is a delimiter. Okay, so if you're mentioning different types of delimiters, so this entire thing is equivalent to this. Okay, that is the difference. Okay, and now if you want to change something like, uh, you know, what do you say? Um, Instead of L of, now here, one is taken as, here one is taken as a uh, string, right? So now, now I want L of one. L of one here means the index one, okay? Is equal to, I want it in the integer form. Do that. Okay, now I want to print L. So you can see the change here it was a uh, what do you say i'm sorry yeah so here it was a character it was a string and here it is an integer okay is that understood is that clear any doubts any questions and uh, these are the different uh, you know operations that we perform on list del at a uh, particular index del is that particular value at that index and remove also does the same but the difference between del and remove is that you know uh got it yes thank you thank you for the response yeah let us check it okay oh my god i understood my internet is damn slow but this is not what i was expecting today so sorry about it for all the interruptions. Okay. So T of 0 is like the index position at 0 that is printed. Right? And now I am trying to do this. Now what is happening here? The number 0, whatever it was there, that is deleted. Do you see the difference? Did you understand? Like you see. Here, the index 0 was deleted. What was the index 0? 5, this element. Now, if you see, this 5 doesn't exist here anymore. But what happened here was, we moved the uh, number 0 itself. Okay, like here, the number 0 is there. The number is uh, deleted. Like in del, we, uh, when you're using del, you give the index. Okay. Now, when you're using remove, give value as in uh, argument, okay? Is that understood? Thank you. Okay. So, again, the sizing came here, like you're deleting the index 3 is to 6. Like from the index 3 to 6. Okay. Yeah. Pop is like you just pop out the last whatever is there. No? Append, what do we do? In append, we just uh, add it to the end, right? Here, popping is the deletion at the last index. Okay, that is it. Very simple. A, X, and B can be written as, you know, uh, like A, X, and B is, e is simply if you write it, A is equal to A plus B. Okay. To run it, uh, okay, 
let me write it now a is equal to a plus b okay now i'm writing this do you understand what i meant by that okay so extend and this function they are similar so even if you write it this is what internally happens okay so whenever you're writing this that's what is internally happening okay both of them are very similar it's not very similar they're exactly same okay but still why are we using both of them that's how it is okay <laughs> anyway so yeah uh i'll copy pop so like what happens is uh you know when l1 is equal to l2 is uh, if we were in some you know if i was taking it this session offline it would have been really great because it would have been uh, much easier to explain all of this on offline you know i i'd be able to explain to it you know diagrammatically but i'm sorry we don't have that opportunity right now that's a minute okay yeah now if you see uh, one of the uh, you know it's it's a major difference okay like l1 is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 and now l2 is equal to l1 so what happens here is l2 is stored in some uh, okay let me just take it quickly i'll just explain this okay is my screen visible yeah you is my screen visible guys okay so yeah yes thank you okay okay so thank you thank you for the stress for the response okay so what happens is this like uh, we have a list called l1 and we have something like this okay we have a 1 2 3 okay just consider the data we have here okay is the data we have here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 uh, something like that okay and now l1 is pointing to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 5 and 6 now when i perform this operation l2 is equal to l1 then what am i doing now i'm writing now i'm taking another uh, list l2 and this thing whatever we have here is again pointing to the same memory location okay and uh, internally what is happening like when you do this l1 is equal to l2 this is what is happening okay l1 is equal to l2 means this okay is that understood mm -hmm. so like these two refer to the same uh, memory location that is the reason whenever you change something from l1 it will affect the l2 as well see now you have uh, performed l1 dot pop so that means you are popping out the element uh, in the last index which is 6 now the same change is reflected in l2 as well but did we pop from l2 no we did not but still the change is reflected here also okay since they are referring to the same memory location okay you will understand the memory locations better if we just keep talking more about them and we keep uh, learning more about them you will understand it's okay if you don't understand okay just for now remember like whenever you are using this equal to operator whenever you are using assignment operator what happens is whatever changes is done to the original one the same changes will be reflected in the newly assigned one also in the new list also okay but when you do the copy when you uh, write the function copy 
that won't happen like l1 will be different l2 will be different now what happens memory in the memory is something like this you know l1 l2 l1 will be pointing to this and l2 will be pointing to this okay like this l2 this is a copy of l1 okay l copy is here and that will be pointed by l2 is that understood any doubts a copy of l1 okay oh i don't need to save that okay it has got the data 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so whatever the changes that we perform in this region won't affect this region okay that is the reason that is the difference between assigning oper assignment operator and copy okay and we have other methods also sort sorting is like just simply sorts them into ascending order reverse is like reversing the list okay and if we put it as true by default it's false if we put it as true then it will give the descending order okay and if we just simply write the reverse function then whatever the elements are there that will just be reversed okay now let us get into tuples okay i'm going to ask confusing okay do you want me to continue or what shall we do or do you want me to just stop here or shall we continue okay okay then okay then we stop here and we will continue in the next class with tuples i'm sorry we couldn't we uh, the methods and slicing took a lot of our time so no issues in the next class we will just uh, cover with the functions and we will finish the tuples and dictionaries also with those two uh, list has got many methods and rest of them are quite easy so you don't have to worry about it okay so any questions okay so if there are no questions we'll stop here and we'll wind up the session for today okay thank you so much thank you everyone so we wind up the session today so yeah uh, thank you everyone for your uh, patience and listening to me so we stop here let me stop the presentation okay thank you all for coming have a great day again, uh, ahead tomorrow have a good sleep everyone and on and on yes uh, thank you guys thank you for attending this session and uh, probably in the next session uh, we will cover the remaining topics and we will move into functions and object oriented programming language i mean object oriented programming system of python okay so please attend uh, all the sessions which we are going to conduct so it, uh, these sessions will be very much useful for you for second years it will be very much useful uh, because in third years when they come to third years uh, there will be a placement training so nowadays python has become more popular so learning python may become an advantage for you in third year so please try to utilize this opportunity so thank you for joining thank you and also in the next session we will as i promised we will be discussing the uh, differences between list and tuples it is a uh, most probably it's used for you know uh, it's asked in interviews what are the differences between list and tuples and if we simply say that uh, there's only syntactical difference it will not give a good impression in the interviews so let us uh, discuss that and also the doubt that one of our friends has asked 
uh, what, what is the real life application of splicing. I'll get back to you about that as well. So in the next session, so just kindly stay tuned. Okay. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good sleep. And uh, no need Have to worry about the material. Time. So we will post the material by this uh, weekend. Okay. So no need to worry about uh, the material. And we will also post yeah, the Jupyter to... codes, which uh, you have seen uh, just now in hands-on session. So we will uh, post the program codes also along with the material by this weekend. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's just that we are also college students, right? We just not, uh, we couldn't take the time off. We will definitely try to make it as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you, everyone.